So hello, welcome today. Um, this is a video about doing an, another indirect pulp cap. And um, this was just picked up on a, uh, a routine x-ray, um, some bitings that were taken, routine examination, and we found decay in the occlusal part of this lower six. And on the x-ray, we can show there's a little bit of secondary decay underneath the filling itself. So initially, obviously, this this is just was was just going to be a, a routine um, a filling that I was going to do. Um, I wasn't expecting this filling to be deep at all, especially when we looked at the uh, the, the bite wing radiograph. But as soon as I removed the, uh, the the composite filling that was in place here, I immediately noticed that the uh, the dentin underneath was was very very quite severely decayed. And as soon as I uh, recognize this, I'm gonna be super, super, super careful, okay? Because I'm, I'm always thinking about the pulp, okay? So essentially what I've done here is I've removed all of the filling material and I haven't used a fast hand piece on the dentin at all. And now all I'm doing is I'm just using the slow hand piece just to remove around um, the, the, the base of the cavity. Um, I'm just feeling here with an excavator, thinking to myself, this is obviously decay, and is this just a slither of dentin, or is this the roof of uh, the pulp chamber? I, I know now that it isn't the roof of the pulp chamber, but I'm just being super, super, super careful. And I'm just, I'm just looking at this cavity and thinking, this is very, very, very deep. Okay, I've got to be really, really, really careful around here. So. Once I've removed um, the vast majority of the decay, I just want to remove some of the undermined enamel around the, the edges of the cavity. Um, this, this helps with uh, the, 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 the strength of the filling overall over a long period of time, but also helps to sort of visualize where we are. Um, and again, I am just using the slow hand piece to gently remove the decay around the just the outer part of the uh, the cavity itself. So once I've removed all the decay around the outer part of the cavity, I'm going to draw my attention now to the base of the cavity, and I'm just very very gently just assessing the decay at the base of this cavity, and I'm I'm really really concerned about um, about exposing the pulp. I know the pulp is still alive because we did a, um, a pulp test at the last appointment. I'm thinking to myself, do you know what? I think some of this decay needs to be removed. So I'm going to very, very, very gently remove some of the decay with a slow hand piece. And it looks like I'm being quite rough here, but actually what I'm doing is I'm using the slow hand piece and just very, very gently brushing the base of the cavity. And again, I'm just thinking to myself, I think there's a tiny, tiny little bit more decay that's going to be removed. In this case, not all of the uh, decay was removed. Okay, but I just wanted to get most of it as much as possible. So once we've um, removed a little bit of the decay, it, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a possible suggestion there's an exposure there. Um, under the microscope, uh, I, I don't think there's a, an exposure, but at this point I'm thinking to myself, I'm not gonna use any more drilling at all. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just uh, do, a, do a direct pull cap over the, the, uh, the, the remaining decay. Uh, before I do the pull cap, I like to do um, an etch first. You've got to be super careful with the etch because sometimes using the etch can expose the nerve. Okay, so the great thing about the etch though, it just cleans up the whole cavity and it looks really super nice. So now I'm going to use um, a bioceramic putty. It's called Wellroot. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. The um, the, the, the sort of uh, the properties of this, being able to, um, to manipulate this is, is really, really, really nice. And um, it, it's it, a little tip from me, when I'm applying it into a cavity, I want to make the cavity, make sure the cavity is moist and not completely dry. If you try and fit this onto a completely dry cavity, it will lift off. And don't forget as well, a bioceramic, um, it sets um, in, in, in the presence of moisture. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's wet in there. And now I'm using a, a light cure glass ionomer here. So this is, um, trying to think what this is called. This is called Vitribond. Yeah, yeah, so it's a uh, Vitribond. It's kind of mixed and then placed into like a little carrier. I'm now gonna bond. I think I bonded this with iBond and, and I'm gonna like you. And then over the top of the Vitribond, over the top of the GIC, I'm gonna use a flowable composite. 
and I'm going to set that. So when I do my composites, my posterior composites, I like to layer my um, my uh, my. my uh, I like to do different colours of layers, so I'm doing an A4 core bond um, shade here and then and I'm going to use an A2 over the top and that gives like a kind of a nice um, colour and a, a natural colour to the, to the tooth itself. And then essentially just, I'm just going to layer the cusps, super, super, super easy. And I've got these amazing little instruments um, which I bought from... Uh, I can't remember where I bought them, but they're, they're, they're super. If, if, if you're ever into uh, doing composites, getting a, a specific set of instruments that, that help you layer composites, it's, it's just a godsend. And overall, um, you know, we've got a nice little bit of anatomy there. I, th I think it looks quite nice. And um, yeah, overall, nice and easy. Looks nice and natural. Listen, if you like these videos, I really, really like making them. Please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions or you have any criticisms of the video today or any tips, I am not scared of criticism. You you let me know in them comment sections and, and uh, let's, let's get a debate. And thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.